What is up everybody, Dan and the Fireman here. Today we're gonna to be talking about the biggest motorcycle cornering mistakes to avoid. Let's jump right into it. Right here we have a crest of the hill and sharp left turn. How are we gonna handle it? Foot down, it's, can't Flintstone it. And we dump the bike. So we're gonna watch a little bit more because there looks like to be an injury. Oh, she said really bad. There looks like they're talking down on a Cardo's, which I have a link in the description. Oh, this guy's like, hey, should we call 911? That's very good because we're going to be talking just a little bit about what we should do here and it's remain calm and sure your own safety and all of that stuff. So we're going to jump right into this. So right here, we have that crest of the hill. You notice where the road really just disappears. Okay, that's going to be called the crest of the hill. Crest of the hill, it's kind of going up and over the crest right there and you can't see what's on the other side. So what I like to consider that is a blind vertical turn. We have blind left turns, blind right turns. Think of it as a blind vertical turn. Uh, we can't go see over it. So what I like to do there is definitely, hey, that's a gut reaction. I don't like that. Let's go ahead and go into orange stage, prep and ready. Go and roll off the throttle. We don't need to apply the brakes, but let's go ahead and cover them just in case. Roll off the throttle, lower that speed a little bit until you can actually see and you have good vision because our line of sight is demolished here. We can't see what's around it. Who knows? There could be the, the end of the world is right there. You don't know, uh, at least in your eyes, because it could be a deer. It could be like a tree branch. Could it be road surface hazards? All that stuff. And if you notice how the sun also plays a few tricks on you with the, the shade, it keeps going in and out with the trees. Write in the comments if you ever had that issue where it's just like constantly like messing you up and it's it's almost like camouflaging the road a little bit. That's also another hazard that I've noticed. So right here we have a left turn chevron. So we got sharp left turn. So that crest of the hill kind of screwed you up. Let's say you're going a little bit too fast for that crest of the hill already. And then as soon as you get over that crest of the hill, you're like, oh no, there's gonna be a sharp left turn. So are you prepped and ready for that? Not really. So when we are in orange stage, we are already preparing for something that could be happening by just our vision, by what we feel in our gut. And then slowing down is usually the best option. A lot of people just have a lot of trouble when it comes to modulating their speed. And when it comes to crashes and close calls, speed is usually a factor. So how about we just reduce the speed when something is kind of eh, I don't like it. And then we can always add more speed. It's a lot easier to add speed when we need to. It's harder to reduce speed. So we're coming up to here, foot down, a little bit of a panic. So we could have made it, you know, so go ahead and initiate a little bit more counter steering, really focus into it. One thing I learned when I was uh, snowboarding as a child, which I've applied to when I was teaching students at the MSF, is that you look where you want to go. The instructor told me, you know, you have your feet kind of planted. If you want to go right, you look right. You want to go left, look left. And that what, what that does is kind of just turns your body a little bit. And when it comes to snowboarding, when you turn your body, your hips kind of move too, you know, if you really exaggerate it, and that's going to move the board a little bit. So when it comes to uh, motorcycle riding, you know, you can make turns without looking the way you want to go, but it's a little bit harder. So what you want to do is really look into it. One thing you want to do is maybe put that chin on your shoulder, chin on the shoulder and go, chin on the shoulder and go. Really turn that neck, rubber neck it if you had to. Uh, right here, we kind of had a panic, so maybe a newer rider. So we had that dumping of the bike once we hit the soft dirt and our left arm went down. So it looks like she was holding her left arm. There could have been a laceration. You do have arteries right here. So what we have is a rescue pack. So you might want to grab one. It's on our shop, new low price. It does have tourniquets in it so you can really cinch it down, but then also we have 509s, 4x4s, so you can apply some direct pressure, maybe even pack the wound if you need to. And that's what we're talking about here. So remain calm first and foremost, as us as the rider behind us, it could have been our loved one. We start to panic, oh no, the love of my life just crashed. Not the bike, but the woman. <laughs> and uh, you're starting to panic a little bit. So we need to call 911 or tell someone to call 911. Thankfully, the guy that comes up, you want me to call? Perfect, love it. Uh, probably a smart rider. Ensure our own safety. Let's pull off to the side. We don't want to get hit by any vehicles. If we get hit, we can't help our, our, our loved one or our riding buddy. And now there's two victims. Now you have to have two people to help. So it's not really good. So look for hazards. Watch out for any of that stuff. Uh, could be the, the end of a cliff. You don't want to go down there. Now there's two people down there unless you can actively get yourself back out. Wear PPE. We have gloves inside of our rescue kits. So make sure you do that. You can use your visor of your uh, your helmet, if there's any blood or anything splashing, not a big deal, but we want to make sure we stop major bleeds. One of the biggest killers of people that is easily preventable in the pre-hospital setting is loss of blood, okay? Hypovolemic shock, people dying because they've been insanguinated, and it's no good. So if we can prevent that, we can prevent a lot of it. So trauma situation, make sure we do that. Quickly assess the severity here. Are they disoriented? Because we're looking for head injury symptoms, nausea, vomiting, any of that stuff. If they're starting to vomit and they're on their back with the helmet on, they're going to aspirate it, which means they're going to breathe in their vomit. 
and they're going to die. So we want to make sure in that position, we can take the helmet off, but be very careful because we have spinal cord injury symptoms. So if they are breathing and they're conscious, or it's, let's take that back. If they're breathing, you don't need to take the helmet off. Okay. If they're not breathing and they have a full face helmet, you need to take that off so you can do rescue breaths. If they are not breathing and they have like a three quarter helmet, which I believe she has a three quarter helmet or half helmet. You don't need to take the helmet off because you have access to the airway. Shock symptoms, pale, cool, clammy, diaphoretic means they're sweaty, sweaty, sweaty. It's starting to shunt all the blood out, in and out. Lots of bad issues. Stop major bleeds. Uh, lay the rider down. Monitor any changes and keep the rider warm. We do have emergency blankets inside of our rescue pack. So we're going to come up to here. Take a look. I mean, it, it is a full face, but it's like one of those that you can take off. So she looks like it's really bad. They're talking on the Cardos. Use the code DDTF in checkout or click the link in the description. I think it's automatic. Taking a look at that. So this one, it's almost like a pressure dressing. You can you can do it. And if it's really bleeding, if it's like arterial, high and tight with that tourniquet. High and tight with that tourniquet. So make sure you take care of the people you love. Make sure you take care of everything. Let's go ahead and make those corners not fatal. All right, everybody, we're going to jump into this one. It looks like this guy's going to get his knee down in the mountains. I think we know what's going to happen next, everybody. Let's take a look. A little bit too low, 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 and there's the high side. Okay, high side is highly dangerous, no pun intended. So right here, we're going around a blind corner. This is going to be a line of sight issue. We don't want to be going super fast around it because we don't know if there's a giant rock. You know, Max Riss hit one uh, last year, I don't know, out of the 27 wrecks that he's had. Uh, but yeah, he hit a, hit a rock uh, around a blind corner like this, okay? So we want to make sure that we're not doing that because if we do hit something, a road surface hazard, maybe a stalled vehicle or whatever, we're going to go in, off and slide uh, into the guardrail, maybe even go off the cliff. So remember, uh, the racetrack or the, the streets are not your racetrack, especially in the mountains. It's highly dangerous. You're going to have to get a helicopter ride for most of these things, and that costs a lot of money. Go take it to a track. If this is California, there's plenty of tracks everywhere in California. We're trying to get our knee down. It's just our knee, but our head is staying up. So it looks like kind of a newish rider. Eh, a little bit, a little bit of experience, but it's like we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing. We're doing a little crisscross. Our knee is down, but our body is up, and our bike is down. So we're pushing the bike down while keeping our body up. Okay. The goal is to keep the bike upright as much as possible, so you can allow the suspension in the front to work together uh, in a more vertical position. So right here, we lost traction on that rear tire because we started pushing it more and more and more and more to the side of the, the tire while the gravity and the and inertial forces, forces, physics, is trying to push it out to the side. So we're losing traction while pushing out the side because we are using a lot of traction for turning, a lot of traction for acceleration, and then it just lost it just completely lost it so it starts to do a little low side but the moment it's like nah i think i'm good I, and it grabbed it again it's going to flip you up so that's a very dangerous dangerous type of crash because the forces are now transmitted into your body and it slingshots you and then boom we got head and neck injuries possibly our back looks like it could be possibly injured it looks like he's got full leather so hopefully there's back protection has a helmet but you can still have compression of the spine in your in your cervical spine which is this first seven vertebrae in your neck and if you get it in the first like two or four, uh, that's where your brainstem lives and you could be paralyzed. So be very careful with this. It's not worth it to me. I just enjoy the views um, and we're kind of rolling around. Now imagine if there's a vehicle coming around, let's say a big old truck. How are we doing? Yeah, we're not doing good. This is why when you go to a track, there's no cross traffic. There's no oncoming traffic. There's no guardrail right on the shoulder. You have a lot of runoff when it comes to everything. The, the track is in good in good condition. You have possibly EMS on site. You have multiple people on site. And it's not like you're going to, you know 10 miles that way and somebody has to come get you in 10 miles. It's a loop. So they, they can get to you pretty quickly. And that's one of the big things here. And you don't need to have a helicopter come land over here in the field and start another brush fire in California. So make sure we are riding how we're supposed to be riding out on the road. Don't do this. And maybe even rescue this person because they're going to probably be in a lot of pain. So grab yourself a rescue kit. All right, everybody, we're going to jump into this one, Scotty's Adventures. Let's take a look, see what happens here. We have two vehicles coming, and we just went off-road. So there's that uneven uh, pavement, which is going to be an issue when we're trying to get back up and over. Think of it as kind of like the tram tracks or railroad tracks. Uh, kind of getting your foot or getting the tire in the groove. It's not going to be a good thing. So what I believe happened here is that we lost line of sight because the vehicles took it from us. We were looking through the turn, and then all of a sudden, 
the vehicle got in front of me. Ah, I can't see. And then when it went by, it messed me up. And this is where we really start to focus and we start to kind of understand orientation. Okay, we're observing. This is part of the OODA loop. Observe, orient, decide, and act. Uh, we are observing everything. Okay, we, we see where we're at, but we have to orient ourselves. So we ob uh, observe. Now we can kind of create a picture of where we are. So think of it like as Frogger, the old school video games. Now, you know, anything top down, maybe even third person view, whatever you want to do. Uh, but it allows you to see what's around you and kind of grounds you into space and time. And so that if something takes away your vision for a second, you do know, let's say you're walking right now, you're walking and you're about five steps from the door. If you close your eyes, you do know you have five steps until you reach the door and you're not gonna hit the door if you take five normal steps. And that's orientation to your system when you have a loss of sight, loss of hearing, loss of touch, any of these things. Use what you got. So right here, we're coming up. And maybe we lost some line of sight here because this is on the top of the helmet, not on our chin. So our vision might be obscured a little bit. Um, maybe it's a little bit too fast to the corner too. And this might be a newer rider. It seems like a pretty easy turn, but we just failed to negotiate the corner, which is gonna be a huge reason why people crash. And right here, we start to panic a little bit. We could have initiated a little bit more counter steering, but the problem here is that we did it. So since we didn't, Hopefully we're a smart rider, inquire and use personal protective equipment, which you guys can grab some off of RevZilla. Uh, links in the description for that. So up and over, crashed on the ground, lost his head, and we are dead. No, I'm just kidding. That's the, the GoPro that fell off. So hopefully we have full gear. Make sure you guys are wearing it and uh, being situationally aware. Maintain your fundamental skills. Go to a parking lot. Practice your swerves. Practice everything. We do have a drill booklet if you really, really... Come here. If you really, really want to practice your skills all in a parking lot, we have 20 drills in here. Go ahead and do it. Every single one of them has a video example so you can use your phone and uh, scan the QR code. Uh, links in the description for that. All right, everybody. So hopefully you guys learned a little bit. Hope you guys ride safe, be safe, and be a smart rider. I'll see you around.